thank you, the Honorable uh, Nasaharu Nakagawa, for accepting to be with us here at the ICD. Uh, thank you for the wonderful lecture you have given uh, upstairs. And uh, we have a follow-up questions just to interview you. I will, I, will, I will start by asking you a couple of questions, and then my colleagues, we, mm -hmm. we continue. Yeah. yeah. Well, so it's my pleasure. I, I really appreciate the invitation uh, here, and I enjoyed uh, the, each presentation that uh, we, we had so far. It's, it's my pleasure. Okay, yes. thank you. So the first <coughs> question is, mm -hmm. uh, how do you see the developments in intercultural relations within the East Asian re region? East Asian regions? Yeah. I mean, uh, regions? Yeah. Uh, well, we have uh, sort of a common cultural heritage or root among the nations of East Asia, not China, North Korea, or Japan, uh, or Taiwan. So uh, from ancient uh, history of these areas, we, especially Japan, observe a lot of uh, cultural heritage and uh, turn it to, to be Japanese, you know. So uh, we, we have uh, a whole lot of common uh, value systems among, I think, us. So uh, the thing that we have to do is to uh, control the, the politics, not, not, not to mess up uh, this relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, smoothly uh, and uh, proactively uh, to, to, to go uh, to make up uh, Asian community as the uh, European community or European Union is there, uh, we really have to learn how to to, to do this this sort of cultural uh, yes and then uh, can cultural diplomacy in your view help to strengthen the intercultural relations among the countries within this region mm -hmm. well I mean to, to me the, the government uh, is uh, should be uh, far from uh, this uh, cultural exchange, rather, well, they they should uh, uh, expend uh, the money, yeah. but uh, they should not uh, put their, the the words. I mean, don't control that kind of things. I mean, uh, the private sector is uh, pretty much active to communicate with each other, and just uh, government should uh, just pay money. That's a that's enough, I think, for and the not government. And in the, the cultural diplomacy uh, activities, uh -huh. so to say. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you very much. I think I uh, leave it now to my colleague to... Yes. Um, so concerning the East Asian region, um, how do you believe it contributes to the strengthening of the cross-continental cooperation? Or, in your opinion, um, what are the economic, political, um, cultural roles of Japan and the East Asian region in uh, facilitating um, cross-continental cooperation? Oh. I think in that kind of, uh, case, uh, the economic ties or uh, interchange of uh, economic uh, activities are now playing the major role to, to connect uh, these countries. In the especially China, uh, the trade, the amount of the trade uh, is now, you know, between between Japan and China, is now surpassing uh, that of uh, the United States and Japan, and the number one uh, trade partners of uh, J uh, China, and also the Japanese companies are now investing a lot of money. And making factories there, or or M and A's, and so on, and so uh, a lot of stakeholders each other, you know, and that kind of economic ties uh, comes to 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 the next stage. Uh, should be the political tie, but uh, in politics, it's it's it's. Uh, uh, pretty much uh, miserable situation in there. So 
our our next step is to overcome this uh, political challenge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, as a former minister of education of Japan, um, how would you say the higher educational system in Japan compares to other countries in the region and leading universities in EU and US? Uh, when I, when I uh, get a position uh, of uh, Minister of Education, I found out that the Japanese uh, universities uh, tend to uh, see the things in inside, I mean, so domestic uh, in their activities or the way that they uh, teach students. So I just started at the time to, to renovate uh, the systems of the Japanese university to to open up uh, their system to the world and invite a lot of students and also uh, they should uh, send a lot of students to to abroad and then uh, initiated a system like um, Erasmus in, in this uh, area uh, between the, the, the Asian way of Erasmus we call that uh, campus Asia and uh, we put that uh, management between China, uh, Korea, and Japan. We just started it. And that kind of uh, renovation is necessary for Japanese uh, universities. And how does Japan compare in terms of equal access and availability for higher education? Well, uh, right now, most of the Japanese students are directly coming from high school and I understand that uh, in, in the case of Europe or the United States a uh, larger part of the students are from like business uh, uh, circle or um, more than like 30 years old or 40 years old and coming back to uh, the school sort of so-called so recurrent recurrent education and uh, from that point of view, the, the Japanese uh, educational system is now uh, lacking uh, the recurrent uh, factor of the education. So that is one uh, theme that we have to uh, seek for. And the another one is uh, uh, the money. Uh, we should expand the uh, or substitution of, of the tuition and also try to lower the tuition and in the end I think uh, no tuition you know <laughs> this is the idea mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, still uh, we have a long way to go like uh, Australia uh, we have uh, uh, very much um, um, you know senior uh, populations growing and we have to take care of the uh, pension system or medical system and so on uh, plus uh, putting the money and the students uh, it's a uh, very uh, hard job for the minister to do but uh, gradually uh, the things are expanding and uh, we I think that kind of direction is necessary mm -hmm. And which measures is the Japan government uh, taking to keep those standards uh, high or to raise chances for students to apply for those schools and get what? proper education? <coughs> which uh, measures is the Japan government taking to uh, allow more opportunities for students to apply for higher education? Uh, well, uh like I said before, you know, just money. If you have money, okay. and there is no problem. So expanding uh, at the fund uh, for the students, uh, that's the uh, main, I think, uh, policy that we, we should perceive. Thank you. Uh -huh. okay. And the last question is for me. Uh, you as a senior politician, what is your message from new generation of young leaders? Oh, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, cultural diplomacy is very important. <laughs> and uh, like in, in, in this area, uh, 
you go abroad as you are young, and this is, uh, uh, I think, the fundamental uh, factor for the uh, future leadership uh, of uh, of your own country. When you, when you go back to uh, your country and uh, take leadership, it's necessary for you to go abroad and see uh, the different cultures and also to observe your your own. Like you you understand the others. It means that uh, you understand yourself too. Mm -hmm. Comparatively, uh, you can observe yourself, and this is very I think important factor for uh, the youngsters uh, for the future leadership. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> I would like to thank you for your time, and it was privilege and honor have you with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.